Uh, now, ne next, uh, I'd, I'd really like to uh, invite uh, His Excellency uh, Luis uh, Kesta, and uh, he's the ambassador of uh, Peru to China, and uh, since also 2018. And, and uh, prior to this, uh, he was the Director General for Economic Affairs uh, in Lima, and also served the ambassador of Peru to Australia and, and to New Zealand. And I, I, I know that uh, uh, Peru is, a, is a, a member state of a Pacific Alliance. And uh, we're very pleased CCG hosted uh, Pacific Alliance uh, uh, for ambassador come to CCG last December, uh, including uh, uh, Chile, Colombia, and Mexico, of course, uh, from Peru as well. So, so there's quite a, a, a lot of potentials to be collaborated between uh, Latin American countries and, uh, uh, and China. So today we actually have all, uh, uh, quite a wide range of representatives of different parts of the world. So, so that's your term, and uh, we would like to hear from you. The China International Fair for Trade Services is among the most important trade fairs in China, providing a well-established framework to the advancement of trade, not only of goods, but also of services. We should acknowledge that the deceleration of global economic growth can only be overcome with open markets that allow goods, services, capitals, and mainly people to move seamlessly between countries. The concurrence of many issues, such as the disruption of international trade in general, this array of services supply chains, decoupling that hinders technological and digital advances, travel restrictions within and from other countries, inflation, economic recession, and the effects of worldwide food scarcity and climate change are the most important setbacks for trade in services growth. Governments and international organizations around the world should consider solutions to these urgent issues providing the best foundations to promote trade in services such as education, tourism, health and financial services, among many, in order to eventually overcome the gloomy and uncertain economic outlook we are facing nowadays. The best strategies to tackle these problems are promoting inclusive policies for services, reconstruction of resilient supply chains, and the easing of travel restrictions. Countries should stay committed to globalization and openness. Furthermore, the challenges for emerging markets must be taken into consideration. We need more inclusive and sustainable policies that benefit all the world. We require to improve market access and to continue promoting economic integration as before. The best to, to, uh, to show a worldwide recovery of a strong global economic integration, trade and investment must flow without barriers, and our health system and networks of cooperation must be strengthened and better coordinated to cope with current and new issues. China, when entered the World Trade Organization in 2001, has compromised to pursue an open, productive, and participatory development strategy. Moreover, China will have to show that, apart from its engagement with its circular economy, it has to be at the same time even more engaged with the world economy as a whole, and that it is ready to play its part in the strengthening of global trade. China's active participation in APIC as a mechanism of cooperation and the RCEP as a regional trade agreement and its interest to adhere to other regional economic treaties, such as the CBPPP, in which Peru is a member, and the EPA, that Claire mentioned, are encouraging signals. However, structural internal reforms will be needed. Let's get together as partners to seek new ways to promote trade in general and trading services. The key meetings of APEC in Thailand and G20 in Indonesia next November should be opportunities to find and propose new strategies as equals.